Do you find yourself regularly in a place where leads have dried up, your pipeline is empty? I call this the pipeline cliff. And if you find yourself in this situation regularly, this podcast is going to open your eyes to a handful of things you can do to fix that. So what I found is a lot of clients get in this hamster wheel or treadmill or whatever you want to call it mode where you're really busy on the front end, putting opportunities in your pipeline because you have a lot of time. And then as time goes on, you have less and less time. And as a result, you start doing less and less prospecting. And next thing you know, your pipeline has just dried up. And it's always difficult to re-engage, restart the treadmill and start putting more opportunities back in your pipeline. And so today's podcast is really about getting over this and avoiding that pipeline cliff. Because once you fall off the pipeline cliff, it's always difficult to restart. In fact, I would say it takes anywhere from three to six months to re-engage your pipeline. And so what you want to do is avoid that situation by doing a handful of things we're going to talk about today. The first thing that you can do to avoid the pipeline cliff is something that I call the rule of 300. This is where you prospect six days a week and it leaves time off for one day a week, every week. Plus it gives you off two weeks a year. So your Thanksgiving, your Christmas or whatever holidays, right? The goal here is to prospect roughly 300 days of the year. If you can prospect 300 days a year, you're going to see a situation where there's always something going in the pipeline. This rule of thumb is contrary to the way most people prospect. Most people prospect a lot like they shop at a grocery store. They keep putting things in the cart until the cart is full, regardless of what they need. It's like, well, the cart's not full. Let me keep putting stuff in it. That's how most people grocery shop. You just keep filling it up. Even if you get to a point where the grocery cart is full, that's where you stop, even if you need more. Let me say that again. Even if you need more, you stop when the cart is full because you're like, the cart is full. Well, what if today when you shopped, you grab the bulk size of toilet paper and the bulk size of dog food and the bulk size of a couple of other things, and you only have three or four things in the cart, and most of them are not groceries. You've got to keep shopping, right? It's the same thing with your pipeline. If your goal is, I need to add five opportunities to the pipeline, but Part of the goal is also, I need to add a million dollars worth of opportunities. And you add those five in because that was your first goal. And those five only amount to $250,000 worth of opportunities. You're still short $750,000, but you're like, well, I've added five opportunities, but you're still short. So you need to add more. Some people will just stop at those five because their goal was to add five. They've kind of forgotten about the bigger goal of the number they needed to hit or the bigger goal of not stopping just because you hit your goal. Just because you hit the goal of a million bucks in your pipeline doesn't mean you should stop. If there are other opportunities and other ways to do it, keep doing it. Here's another example. A salesperson hits their goal on Monday, doesn't prospect the other four days of the week. How often does that happen? They'll have one day a week and it's usually Monday. It's the first day of the week. Hardest day of the week, they'll get out there and they'll hit it hard. And by the end of the day, Monday, they've met their goal for the week. So the other four days of the week, they don't prospect. Why? Why is that? Because they hit their goal. That's really the only reason. The goal should be to prospect 300 days out of the year. At least when you start out in this business, until you can pass that on to somebody else, you should be doing that. It doesn't have to be five hours a day, 10 hours a day or anything like that. It could be an hour a day. But an hour a day, you need to prospect and put something in your pipeline. Because if you're putting something in your pipeline, even if it's just updating contact information, email addresses, things like that, maybe you didn't get through to somebody, but you found somebody's information that's been hard to get to. Like, oh man, I finally figured out who the PM is over at Fort Hood, or I finally figured out who the contracting officer is that's in charge of this contract vehicle, or I finally figured out who the teaming partner is that's been winning this stuff. That information will help turn into an opportunity at some point. But you've got to be doing that pre-work, the research, the phone calls, the reaching out to people 300 days a year. You've got to be doing it 300 days a year. If you're not, you're going to be in a situation where this is going to dry up. 
It's just inevitable. Again, if you're in the process of, or you're under the philosophy of one day a week, that's four days a month, four days a month. Then you take time off for Christmas and New Year's and Thanksgiving and Arbor Day or whatever it is. And maybe you're only doing 40 days a year because you've taken off two months worth of Mondays, right? Because most holidays fall on Monday. So you're only doing 40 days a year. So 40 days a year versus 300 a year. Can you see the difference? It's a massive difference to think about 40 versus 300. And that's why salespeople that are doing the 300 rule are hitting their numbers or exceeding them. And people that are only doing the 40 rule, or I should say the 40 or less rule, are not hitting their goals. They're just not putting enough in consistently. If you're struggling to win government contracts, the answer is not quitting. The answer is finding the right information you need and the right mentors you need. And I've got a quick solution for you. The quick solution is a book that I just wrote. It's called, I'm new to government contracting. Where do I start? It's a great book that walks you through all of the fundamentals that you need. So if you're struggling with getting contracting officers to call you back, getting teaming partners to call you back, if you're struggling with bidding and losing all the time, if you're struggling with the proposal process, if you're struggling with anything in this business, this book covers it. It's going to walk you through A to Z, everything you really need to know about government contracting and give you not only the foundational education you need, it's going to give you a lot of advanced tactics and strategies that most people don't teach. And it's all in that book. You can go grab it right now on Amazon. Now back to this episode. The other thing about the 40 plan is when you're doing that at just once a month, you're missing stuff. You know, there's things that needed to get turned in and they have a two or three day turnaround. And because you checked on Monday and then now you're checking again on Monday, you're like, oh man, this came out on Friday, but now I don't have enough time to get to it. Or it came out on Wednesday or Tuesday and I don't have enough time to get to it because I only check on Mondays. And as soon as this came out on Tuesday, it had a three day turnaround, a five day turnaround, seven day turnaround. And I totally missed it for whatever reason, because it happens, right? There's a lot of opportunities. There's two agencies that we make fun of all the time, but I won't say them here that do it all the time where they'll put out an RFQ and it's a three day turnaround. It happens all the time. And if you're only doing prospecting once a week, there's a good chance you're going to miss that. There's a really good chance you're going to miss that. So the rule of 300 prospecting 300 days a year, that will change the game for you. The other big shift here is focusing on building a long-term pipeline. And when I say long-term, I'm talking 24 to 36 months. So most people focus on what I would consider a short-term pipeline. At best, it's six months out. Most have a three-month pipeline where it's like, hey, I know this is dropping or this just dropped. I saw it on Sam. And that's where I always say, is that how you're building your pipeline? Just the stuff that drops on Sam? Yeah, yeah, that's where most of it's coming from. Okay, that's the problem. You've got to start building a long-term pipeline 24 to 36 months out, even longer if possible. One of the key ways to do this is when you hear the government talking about an opportunity, you start tracking it. You put it in your pipeline. So if you see something on the forecast and it's 2024 and you see that it's end of 25, put that in your pipeline. If you compete on an RFP and you lose and it's a five-year contract, but you know, going into year three, there's some option years in there. There's a chance for you to possibly compete. Put it in your pipeline. Even if you don't compete in the third year because they pick up the option, even if it goes to the fifth year, you know, hey, I got to be ready for this and I can't wait until the last minute. I've got to be looking at this probably a year out. If it's a big contract vehicle and you know they're coming out with the next version of the contract vehicle and you know that, hey, this is two years out. Okay, we'll start building your team. Start working on it now instead of waiting until it's six months out. Most people wait until the proposal phase when everybody already has a team selected, everybody already has a strategy, and you're left out in the dark. You can't come in at the last second on those big contract vehicles and expect to get on a team if you haven't been tracking it for a year. So start tracking opportunities 24, 36, and even farther months out that will allow you to build a healthy pipeline. 
because it's a healthy pipeline that changes the game for everybody. It solves a lot of problems when you've got more opportunities than you know how to chase. Another thing, even if it's just a one-year contract and you lose it, but you know it's something they're going to buy again next year, put it on your radar. Start talking to the government. Try to have capability briefs. Don't wait until the RFP drops next year. Put it in your pipeline. Start working it. Now, you may only work it once a month, once every other month, but it's one of those 300 days that you're going to work in. It's something you're going to work into that 300 plan where like, hey, you know what? I haven't touched this in a month or two. Let me work on that today because maybe you can't figure out what to work on on a Friday afternoon and you know that's one of your 300 days. So you sit down and you go through like your long-term stuff and you hit everything in your long-term pipeline. But now you're focused on pipeline. And that is what I want you focused on after you leave this podcast. I want you focused on adding stuff to the pipeline. And here's the deal. It doesn't matter if your goal is $1 million or $100 million in your pipeline. You keep building it. You keep building it. Just because you hit the number doesn't mean you stop. Doesn't mean you stop. Because I want you to think about this. Let's say you understand what your pipeline ratio is. Like, hey, we've got a 20% conversion rate. So this means for every million dollars I want to close, I've got X number of millions of dollars in my pipeline. Whatever those numbers are for you, right? Just because you have everything in there that you need doesn't mean something's not going to fall out. Doesn't mean the government's not going to cancel an opportunity. Doesn't mean you're going to maintain your 10, 20, 30% conversion rate. None of that stuff is guaranteed. I've seen situations, it, it happened to us uh, a couple of years ago, where there was a situation where the government had, I, I want to say it was six or seven different opportunities, about a million and a half dollars. And we thought, hey, you know, there's high chance we're going to win third of this, half of this, whatever it may be. And it was month one, silence. Month two, silence. Month three, silence. Month four, silence. Come around month five, the government says, oh, you know what? It was all with the same agency. They just say, you know, we had to cancel all of those. They canceled 100% of those opportunities that we had bid on. Those were RFQs we had submitted. They canceled all of them. So we didn't win any of them. And so that happens sometimes where you've got things in your pipeline and the government just starts canceling things or pushing it off to ne next fiscal year or whatever it may be. So just because you think you've got it made doesn't mean you do. You keep putting opportunities in the pipeline and you keep doing it until when? Well, you don't stop. You don't stop putting opportunities in the pipeline. You keep putting them in because the goal is to win contracts. And until you have a one contract, it's just all a guess. It's really all a guess at this point. But, you know, it's kind of a hope and a guess, if you will, right? So you've got to keep putting it in there. Because again, I guarantee you, the person that's on the 40 a year plan versus the person on the 300 a year plan, that person is doing a lot of hoping and praying and dealing with a lot of disappointment. The person on the 300 plan is doing a lot of winning. That's as hard as this game is. Change from the 40 plan to the 300 plan. If you'll do that and nothing else, you will take your business to a level you didn't know was possible in an amount of time you didn't think was possible. So you will accelerate the growth of your business dramatically beyond your expectations simply because you are crushing it when it comes to prospecting. Let me give you a couple of little tips here to help expand your prospecting. One of them is don't just focus on SAM. People focus on SAM, sometimes the procurement forecast, and that is basically the end of their prospecting. I want you talking to contracting officers. Contracting officers can and should talk to you. It's a numbers game. You've got to call. You've got to email. You've got to be specific. You no, know, you can't give them homework. There's a lot of those things, but you should be talking to them. You should be providing capability briefs to CEOs, PMs, cores, anybody that'll talk to you that's in, in that customer path. The next thing is start networking on social media at professional associations and at conferences. If you're not part of a professional association in this market, you're probably missing out. Things like Society of American Military Engineers, that's just one of the top ones that are out there. They also have a conference. Most of the associations have them. There's so many associations out there in this space for either your industry or the profession or whatever it may be. There's something you can find. If you can't, reach out to me. We'll help you find something. And then with the conferences, there's always opportunities to meet with government folks, shake their hand, 
put a name to a face. Hey, yo, Susan, I have been trying to get a hold of you for six months. I'm sure I'm just one of the thousand emails in your inbox, but I want to put a face to a name. And maybe now, you know, I, I can get that capability brief. I've always been trying to get with you. And the other thing about the conferences is your teaming partners. You're going to get a chance to meet a lot of teaming partners at these conferences. Next is you've got to start talking to customers. Once you actually have some customers, start talking to them. Go back after three, six, nine months and have a capabilities brief with them. Engage them. If you've got employees on site, engage them to bring information back to the company. Hey, what's going on in the agency? Who are the contractors that have shown up recently? What are they doing? What are the pain points? Problems that the client wants to solve? Things like that. You've got to engage the customer at multiple levels to find out about things that aren't in SAM yet, that maybe they aren't even on the radar to go in SAM, but the customer knows it's a problem and you can start talking about it with them to solve that problem. The next thing on my list is to really develop your teaming partners. People always forget this. A lot of folks have one or two teaming partners and that's it. While that's good, it's not going to cut it. You need to have a dozen teaming partners out there that you can work with. All have different skill sets, different socioeconomic statuses, different areas of the country. There's a lot of regions. In fact, you don't have to stop at a dozen. You can have 20 different teaming partners. The more teaming partners you have, the more likely you are to create inbound leads into your business. And that is the name of the game. The next thing I've already talked about a little bit is put more qualified opportunities in your pipeline than you need. Keep putting them in there. Because look, if you wind up in a situation where you have something that you don't think you can respond to, what can you do with that? You can give it to a teaming partner. You can reach out to a teaming partner and say, hey, no, we've got so much stuff on our plate right now. In fact, we just won four contracts. We're onboarding a bunch of new employees, this, that, and the other. I have this opportunity. We've been talking to this contracting officer. I've got some inside information. I want you guys to win this. I want you guys to win this. I want to tee this up for you. I want to introduce you to the contracting officer, help you guys win this thing. And look, you don't even have to put us on your team. If you do, great. I'd love an FTE or two, but I want you guys to win this because I love working with you guys. You're a great company and I want to help you get to the next level. That's something you can do. If you feel overwhelmed in your business, you don't have to just say, ah, we're not responding to that because we don't have time. Take it to a teaming partner. Build some goodwill. See, this is where you have to start thinking beyond your company sometimes and about the other people and lifting other people up, supporting other people, because I guarantee you it's going to come back. Now, you don't have to set the expectation with them of, look, Jim, I'm giving this to you because I'm so overwhelmed right now. I can't respond to it. And I'm going to expect that someday you do this for me. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just give it to them with no expectations. You don't have to put expectations on it. Give it to them help them win it. And then down the road, it's going to happen to you. It will. I guarantee you start focusing on the 300 rule, build your pipeline beyond your wildest dreams. And I guarantee you, you're going to achieve growth and success like you've never dreamed of. If you have questions about this, as always, you can reach out to me. We'll see you next episode. I really hope you enjoyed the podcast today. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to the podcast and screenshot it and tag me on LinkedIn or whatever social media you use. So thank you again for joining us today and we'll see you next time.